My homes in the Bronx, because there were several, usually meant a five or six story building with uh, three bedrooms, small, one bathroom, and a kitchen and a living room. It, you're in a little apartment. You head out, you go outside, and Timmy's there, and what's the name is there, and a bunch of guys from different communities, uh, ethnicities, and so forth. So I hung out with guys from the Ukraine, uh, from other parts of Europe, from Africa, from uh, uh, you name it, they were there and all, all different colors. Jonesy was my African-American friend. We lived in Coney Island. I don't know what you know about Coney Island, but Coney Island has all the steeplechase park, which is kind of a lagoon thing. And uh, it had the big parachute, remember, if you see fil old films. And his father was a, a minister, tall, tall African man. And we just had a good time hanging out. And I said, hey, let's go to Steeplechase. And he said, uh, I can't. And I said, why not? And he said, I'm a, I'm a Negro. Oh, okay, let's go do something else. It never occurred to me. I never, it was, it was like, I look back, it's a lesson. What did I learn from it? And uh, well, I guess lots of things, and but it was a, it was a, as I go back, it's a moving experience. When one of your friend says, "He can't do what you can do because he's a Negro," and it was like it wasn't until later that that I could figure some things out. But I must have been thirteen or fourteen when I learned that. It's a great lesson. Great lesson that we don't need to go into, but it is. Uh, but we lived in, in neighborhoods, as I said earlier, with all kinds of shades. And we'd go out and we'd play, uh, in the very young years, we just play games. And we get a little older, we started playing what we call stickball. You take a broom, get rid of the bottom part of the broom, you play around with a little bit, but before long you've got a bat, and then you are. And we go out and play stickball. And stickball was two short sewer tops, first base and second base. And and uh, the guy would pitch the ball on a bounce, and you'd get in there and swing, and and hit the ball, and it'd fly, and it hit a building. And if you caught the ball before it hit the ground, the guy was out. And so and you were, and you wore uniforms. But that was about twelve or thirteen years. The little one. We just sort of hung around with uh, with other kids and played funny games and nothing particular. Kick the can. We were always in games. Kick the can. You, if you kick the can, you run the first base. It was also always some sort of a sport. We didn't have television or anything like that. So you, maybe you went to a, someone's apartment and hung out for a little while and and. Uh, but it was a cultural thing. But you never thought of that. You just sort of did your thing. I had a lot of free time. And I didn't go to school much. I just played a lot of hooky. What's hooky? Hooky is you didn't go to school. <laughs> and the and the and the truant officer would have to come looking for you. <laughs> and where was and where was Frankie? He was probably in a movie theater somewhere, or down at 42nd Street, maybe watching uh, a live show. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Frank Sinatra. So there's 14 or 15-year-old Frank listening to the biggies, and I mean the biggies. Uh, Bob Hope and uh, Jane Russell, a movie star at the time, and uh, just... Uh, your Broadway stars, and I just ran away and enjoyed that, and I had a wonderful time. I love the theater, I love classical music, I, but I, good education there. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, 
Uh, I wasn't going to school. Yankee Stadium? Oh, yeah. Whoa. Money, 60, money. 60 cents, Yankee Stadium in the bleachers. Okay? I was. I saw Babe Ruth the last day he was in Yankee Stadium saying goodbye because he had throat cancer. And, and then we'd have Yankee Day, and the schools in the Bronx would close. And we'd get on the subways and whatever, and we'd... We'd go to Yankee Stadium and get up in the upper deck, and that was our day. That was school day. And uh, But during that time, my mother and father, this is not a complaint, never saw me play anything. I've always said, hey, that was a big deal. But I made up for it. And Ella and I made for it, right? We've gone to every game we could that our grandchildren, our children, very few games that we missed for those seven. And they all played some sort of sport. And our grandchildren, and they, a lot of them are used to, we'd go to support as many as we could. My dad was always there to help us prepare, right? It's, it's not the number of, you know, shots you take, or I was a kicker in high school and a, and a receiver um, in football, and I kicked countless balls in preparation for the season. Um, and uh, he was there every morning holding for me. He was, he was my coach. He, uh, he taught us, you know, that hard work mattered, and, and our rule was, if I wanted to go, I had to wake him up. He never pressured me. It was always my choice. It was, he wasn't saying, hey, let's go to the gym, and you gotta put in the time. He's like, I'm available. And you know, it was years later in my life that I, when I was doing it with my boys that I realized, oh my gosh, this is a sacrifice. He had a job he had to go to. He had, he, he was, he, he had uh, time commitments that he, that he had, but he was there every morning with me at 6 a.m. shooting. Um, in my career, I spent a lot of time trying to motivate young, you know, young professionals and salespeople, and I always tell them these stories of my dad rebounding, which he did for my older brothers, and he would do for me. Many times he'd already gone to the gym and been back, um, and would just come and tap on my shoulder and never say, let's go. He'd say, would you like me to rebound for you today? And if I said no and rolled back over, that was it. He would walk away, but he just invited me. Would you like to go rebound today? We want me to rebound for you today. And so we'd walk across the street and, and we'd go make a bunch of baskets before school. So when I was pretty young, probably 10 or 11, I remember going with uh, my family to watch my dad play in a softball game. Sports are something that came really easy for our family, something we did together. Um, I don't know how many games we played basketball out here on the driveway or we had Little League Baseball and football and every sport, every season we were doing something. And I always wondered where our athleticism came from. And my dad would always say it came from my mom. <laughs> uh, my mom was this shortstop in softball, you know, in her teenage years. And um, so I went with my family to watch my dad play softball and he got up to bat. It was underhand slow pitch softball. He hit the ball so far, he went up into the lights down at Harmons Park, down in Provo, up into the lights and out of the park for a home run. And as a young kid, I just remember being so proud of him, thinking, that guy is unbelievable. <laughs> so I think I got my athleticism from my dad. Uh, it was really fun to watch him do that. Uh, I was relatively talented when it came to sports. I loved sports, lived for sports. And I was in an Elks hoop shoot and I uh, had advanced from school to region to district to the state championships. And the state championships were in Richfield, Utah. And, you know, back then, uh, we, we were a pretty humble family. We didn't have a lot. Going to Richfield for a day to a hoop shoot with just me and my dad, that was like going to Hawaii for a month with your family in, in our day. And we got in a car together and drove to Richfield and 
by the time I got to Richfield, Utah, I, I believed that I was the greatest shooter in the world. The belief that my dad instilled in me, the confidence that he gave me to feel like I was one of the best ever, I will never forget that. What about the time that Bobby wanted you to go join the gang? He took you down? Holy goodness. I was invited to join a gang. Remember the stories, five stories, six stories, and the basements. And, you know, this one place, the guys had all their gang stuff, zip guns, uh, chains, brass knuckles, da 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 and they brought me, <laughs> took me down to see their stuff and invited me to join their gang. I looked at all that stuff, and it came to mind that, you know, the other gangs have the same stuff. <laughs> and I didn't want any part of it. I just didn't wonder. It just didn't feel right, didn't feel safe. So I, uh, I removed myself from that. And I was blessed once again. Along all these things, I want to share with family. Uh, I don't want to say boasting, but I've been blessed throughout those young years. I was blessed. I just, I didn't do the things they were invited to do. And, uh, and somehow, I, uh, I got away. I just got away from situations that were dangerous. Here's a here are a couple of stories that that uh, will startle my family. Where do you go when you're uh, not going to school? You find something to do. Hey, the Broadway theater, etc. Or there was always a matinee movie, which meant about it could be. And it could be early afternoon or late morning. On Broadway, there's everything. And so uh, I, I went to this theater, and there, was, there were very few people in it. So I'm sitting here alone. And a guy walks in, and all of a sudden, he sits by me. And uh, he makes a move. And I got up and I stood up and I said, I said, leave me alone. I was standing. And he got up and walked away. The problem is you have choices to make. And along the way, you have to make that choice. But sometimes you wouldn't have to make that choice if you're at the wrong place with the wrong group, with the wrong person. You have to be strong enough to say no. Now, was that a brave, am I boasting? No, I'm 13 or 14 years old. There's some things you understand spiritually that, that just come on you and you just say, get out of there. And we all have invitations to do something or be somewhere where something can happen, those are part of the choices you make. In that case, I was lucky. One of my favorite trips with my family was going to New York to see uh, where my father was raised after hearing the stories and the memories that he had. We have very little record of his, you know, any pictures or anything of his childhood. Um, and so we wanted to go, we went and we found like the gravestones of his, of his dad um, and, and other family members. We went and saw a Yankees game together. We rode the subway. We went to the Bronx where my dad grew up and got to see where he lived. That was such an eye opener, so, such a different life than we had here. It is remarkable to see where he came from and where he is now. He was literally this little Puerto Rican kid on the streets of New York 
playing hooky all the time from school so he could go to Broadway shows and the Yankees games. That was his life. And it he he really felt like he had to leave so much of that behind when he joined the church and came west and met my mom and they got married. And so for us to be able to go back and witness that life of his before he was a member of the church and before he um, settled out west, it was remarkable. We rode the subway. We went to a Broadway play, we went to see Mama Mia. Um, after the play, all of us are just in the aisles dancing and singing together. And that was just a piece of heaven with all nine of us together. Um, but one of the fun things we did is we took the subway out to the Bronx and we went to his neighborhood. He showed us the actual apartment where he lived. And again, for us, growing up here in Utah where we have seemingly so much, just seeing that little apartment, um, it, was, it was humbling. And then after we saw where that little apartment was, we walked down to the playground, a playground where he typically would have gone to play and there were some teenagers playing basketball. And so we started playing basketball with them. And we had like three on three, and then four on four, and then pretty soon before we knew it, we were five on five, and we had the whole neighborhood seemed like had gathered at that park around this basketball court. And watching us play, me and my brothers playing these, uh, the kids from the neighborhood, right? with all the different nationalities you can imagine. It was, it was quite fun, and uh, we ended up beating them pretty handily, <laughs> which was kind of surprising but fun. And then afterwards, just as you know, so we're walking down the street with my dad, you know, some of the kids came up to us and just said, hey, thank you so much for building this park for us. So they thought we had actually built the park and were <laughs> the benefactors there, but uh, that was a fun part of that trip to New York playing in those playgrounds where he would have played and uh, seeing where he lived and, and spending time together as a family, just our siblings and my parents. When I think of trips, a lot of them were to support uh, family endeavors or my siblings' athletic events or uh, family reunions to see the farm where my mom was raised. A lot of those times where it was really about the quality time and hearing the memories and recounting the memories and making some of our own. What really um, comes to my mind is the time that we had together and the experiences and laughing, you know, loving, loving where my parents came from and knowing that that will be a forever part of us and a forever part of my children and those to come.